In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about Ribelsus, the semaglutide tablet, and explain what it does to the body and about its specific side effects. This is especially important if you're about to start Ribelsus or you're already established on it. I'm also going to answer some frequently asked questions in my clinic later. Can you get hair loss? Can it give you stomach paralysis? What is the risk of getting cancer? And what's the difference between Ribelsus, Ozempic and Wagovi? These are really important questions which I truly believe that you should fully understand and be informed about when making a decision about taking any medication. So let's get started. So what is Ribelsus? Ribelsus is a medicine used to control blood glucose levels in adults whose type 2 diabetes is not controlled well enough. It can be used on its own or when metformin, another medicine for diabetes, can't be used. Or in combination with other diabetes medicines, it should be used alongside appropriate diet and physical exercise. Now, I do have a video about metformin, which I will leave a link below in the description box. So how does it work? Ribelsus is the brand name for semaglutide, which is a GLP-1 receptor agonist. Ribelsus works for your type 2 diabetes in three ways. Number one, increases insulin. It helps to reduce your blood sugar levels by increasing insulin, and it does this by stimulating your pancreas to release more insulin when your blood sugar level is high. Number two, decreases sugar. It lowers the amount of sugar that is made in your liver and released into your blood. Number three, it slows gastric emptying. Ribelsus slows down the food leaving your stomach after you eat, which may help you feel fuller for a longer period of time. So what's the dose? Ribelsus is available in three doses, three milligrams, seven milligrams, and 14 milligram tablets in three different colored blister packs that are available in pack sizes of 30. Now your doctor will decide which ones you will be prescribed. Ribelsus is not approved for use by anyone younger than 18 years old and the usual adult dose for type 2 diabetes is 3 milligrams taken orally once a day for 30 days, then increased to 7 milligrams. If you need further control, the dose can be increased to 14 milligrams once a day. So who may not be able to take it? To make sure Ribelsus is safe for you, tell your doctor if you are allergic to semaglutide, if you have a stomach or intestinal disorder, if you have gallbladder disease, if you have pancreatitis, eye problems caused by diabetes, or if you have kidney disease, tumors in your glands, family history of thyroid cancer, insulin-dependent diabetes, so type 1 diabetes, and if you have or have risk of diabetic ketoacidosis. And stop using Ribelsus at least two months before you plan to get pregnant. So how do you take Ribelsus? Ribelsus tablets are taken by mouth usually once a day, and you take it when you first wake up and at least 30 minutes before you eat or drink anything. Take the tablet with a small drink of water, no more than 120 mils, which is about four ounces. Swallow the tablet whole and don't crush, chew or break it. And after 30 minutes of taking the tablet, you can eat, drink or take other oral medicines. So what are the common side effects? You could get low blood sugar in people with type 2 diabetes. You might get an upset stomach heartburn, burping, gas or bloating, or nausea, vomiting, stomach pain or loss of appetite, diarrhea or constipation, a runny nose or sore throat, stomach flu symptoms, or headache, dizziness or tiredness. Now what are the serious side effects? Now get emergency help if you have signs of an allergic reaction to ribelsus, such as hives, itching, dizziness, fast heartbeats, difficult breathing, swelling of your face, lips, tongue or throat, 
and call your doctor at once if you have vision changes, unusual mood changes, thoughts about hurting yourself, pounding heartbeats or fluttering in your chest, a light-headed feeling like you're about to pass out, signs of thyroid tumour which would be swelling or a lump in your neck, trouble swallowing, a hoarse voice or feeling short of breath, symptoms of pancreatitis which would be severe pain in your upper stomach, spreading to your back, nausea with or without vomiting or fast heart rate, gallbladder problems which would be upper stomach pain, fever, clay-coloured stools or jaundice which is yellowing of the skin or eyes. If you have low blood sugar which would include headache, hunger, weakness, sweating, confusion, irritability, dizziness, fast heart rate or feeling jittery. Kidney problems which would include swelling, urinating less, feeling tired or short of breath or stomach flu symptoms such as stomach cramps, vomiting, loss of appetite, diarrhea which may be watery or bloody. Now these are not all the side effects of ribalsus. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. Now what other drugs will affect ribalsus? Now ribalsus can slow your digestion and it may take longer for your body to absorb medicines you take by mouth. So discuss with your doctor about all your medicines that you take, especially insulin or other diabetes medicines. Corticosteroids, as these may increase blood glucose, making ribalsis less effective. Beta blockers, as these may hide symptoms of low blood glucose. High blood pressure tablets, such as ACE inhibitors or ARBs, as these may increase the risk of low blood glucose. Certain diuretics, as these may increase blood glucose, making ribalsis less effective. Or Pepto-Bismol, as this may increase the risk of low blood glucose. And finally, Warfarin, as ribalsis may increase the risk of side effects of Warfarin. Some questions that are asked in my clinic include, can you get hair loss? The semaglutide is constantly in the news with headlines that include reports of hair loss. Now be aware that new potential side effects are continually being revealed due to the lack of long-term safety data being available. Now the FDA, the US Medicines Watchdog, and the MHRA, the UK's Medicines Watchdog, monitor the safety of drugs throughout their life cycle. So they also maintain a system of post-marketing surveillance and risk assessment programs to identify side effects that did not appear during the clinical trials or the development phase of the medication. So I would encourage you to report any side effects you experience to your healthcare provider as these may potentially be caused by your medication. Now, can it give you stomach paralysis, also known as gastroparesis? Now, this is a medical condition in which the patient's stomach does not empty properly. Now, normally strong muscles in a healthy stomach contract to move food through the digestive system. This slows down in a patient with gastroparesis and in some cases, the muscles don't work at all. And as a result, the stomach doesn't empty or fails to empty, meaning food stays in the stomach longer than it should. Now, some patients using semaglutide did report this to their doctors who then reported it to the FDA and the MHRA. The first such drug lawsuit filed in the US involved a woman who began receiving semaglutide injections in the spring of 2022. According to the plaintiff, within two years' time, she was suffering from severe stomach paralysis and bearing in mind there is no cure for this. The primary legal issue here could be whether the manufacturer Nova Nordisk of Ribelsis Azempic and Wagovi knew or should have known about the heightened risks of gastroparesis or stomach paralysis that semaglutide posed to users and failed to warn doctors and patients of the risk. Now, what is the risk of getting cancer? In animal studies, semaglutide caused thyroid tumors or thyroid cancer. 
it's not known whether these effects would occur in people, so ask your doctor about your risk. And one of the warnings for not using ribelsus includes if you have multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2, now these are tumours in your glands, or if you have a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer. Call your doctor at once if you think you have signs of a thyroid tumour, such as swelling or a lump in your neck, trouble swallowing, or hoarse voice or shortness of breath. And finally, what's the difference between ribelsus, azempic and Wagovi? Now, the azempic injection and the ribelsus tablet are both licensed for type 2 diabetes. Azempic is an injection taken once a week and can go to higher doses compared to ribelsus, which is a tablet taken every day with strict instructions for taking it, which we did discuss earlier, to optimize its effectiveness. Wagovi is an injection licensed for weight loss and is taken once a week. All three contain the active ingredient semaglutide, however all have different strengths and dosages. I have a video on Azempic versus Wagovi that I will leave a link for in the description box below. And just to add that ribelsus has also been shown in studies to help with weight loss but remember, it's not FDA or MHRA approved as a weight loss medicine as yet. So watch this space. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see new videos that are posted every week. And hit the notification bell if you want to get notified about new videos. And please make a comment in the comment section to tell me what you've enjoyed about this video or what topics you'd like to learn more about. You can also check out my other videos and playlist.